Uh, good evening, Year 9 parents and carers. Um, I'm Mrs Burley and I am acting head of year in Miss Adams' absence. Uh, thank you so much for attending this event tonight. I'm sure you're going to find it incredibly informative. Uh, Mrs Copley and Miss Creed are going to be leading the event and they're going to be taking you through the options process. Earlier today, your children were giving their Pathways booklet. So if you haven't already seen it, please ask them after this meeting to share it with you so you can look at it in detail together and make some really good informed decisions. Um, it will be possible for you to put questions in the chat box throughout this evening's meeting um, and Miss Creed and Mrs Copley will try and answer at least some of them. Any other questions will be answered at a later date. Thank you so much for listening this evening. Thank you so much for coming. It's going to be so incredibly important for your students going forward. Um, and I'm now going to pass you over to Miss Creed. Hello, everyone. It's fantastic to have you here um, at our options evening tonight. So my name is Miss Creed and I'm Vice Principal Overseeing Curriculum at Avonborn Girls and Boys Academies. Um, what I wanted to do before we go into the detail of the options process, um, which Mrs Copley will do, is just give you a bit of a, a flavour for curriculum here and how the options process fits into the wider curriculum that we, we have at the academies. So if we have a look just here, I've got sort of a journey written down for you. Um, the different stages that your child um, will be going through here at Avonborn Academies. And it is important we think about curriculum and that what they study as a journey from year seven to year 13. Um, you can see here we've got our key stage three. This is what they're coming to the end of at the end of year nine. Um, and hopefully throughout year seven and nine, they've uh, experienced a, a wide range of subjects and also the powerful knowledge that sits within those different subjects as well. As they move into key stage four, which is what this options evening is all about, they start to get to make a few more choices about specifically what they would like to study. And, and this is a really nice time. It's a really important time to really think about what they might want to do in the future and how this might tie into the, the choices that they are making. Of course, here we do have core subjects that everyone will study still and Mrs Copley will go through this with you in just a moment but then we do also have the the options part where they can make choices about what they'd like to do and then as we move through after GCSEs into key stage five year 12 and 13 um, they will be then making much more um, bespoke choices at that point about what they would like to study in terms of A-levels that fit with their chosen route uh, and their future career they might be thinking about and potentially high um, sort of high ambition in terms of apprenticeships or possibly um, university as well. So thinking about the options process that they're going through now at this, this key point in year nine is important as a wider um, picture for their journey through their curriculum at our academies. The key thing here just to, to point out is in terms of the option blocks and the option process, we have got some fantastic subjects on offer for them to pick at this point when they're making their choices. These are all subjects that we are confident that they are going to be delivered brilliantly for them and they're going to succeed in. Also, we wanted to make sure the options process was as open as possible for them. So what we haven't done is enforced any kind of block structure where they've got to pick certain subjects from certain blocks when it comes to their open options. Instead, what we are doing is allowing them to pick from our range of subjects. And then once we have all of their decisions back, then looking at those to make sure as many people as possible get their first choices in our um, timetabling structure. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pass you over to Miss, Mrs Copley, who's going to give you a bit more detail about the options process and how it's going to work moving forward. Thank you, Mrs Creed. So, I'm Mrs Copley, I'm the Raising Achievement Lead in school and as Mrs Creed just said, I'm going to explain the actual process and what we need to do now uh, 
together. So in front of us here is the timeline. Obviously today your children had an assembly during deer time and were issued with their pathway booklets that they've hopefully brought home with them. And we're having this live Teams event, which hopefully will answer a lot of your questions and tell you where to get the other information that you need. Tomorrow, our um, options area of our Academy's website goes live and everything that we talk about here will be available on the website. Um, it's under the student area and it's called Year 9 Options. A recording of this event will also go on there so that if anyone has missed it or there's anything you want to go back and review, you can do. Next Wednesday, we have set up an opportunity to talk to subject leads and this will be by appointment only. I'm going to talk a bit more about that later. And then in a fortnight, the following Wednesday after that, we've got our deadline for submitting the option forms. So our core subjects, every student continues to study English language, English literature, mathematics and science. Science, every year 10 students starts on the combined course, which is two qualifications. And by the end of year 10, our um, top scientists will have the opportunity to study physics, chemistry and biology separately as three discrete subjects. Every student also studies a humanities, either geography or history, and this is their first option choice. So these are all the options that we have there for your children to choose from. We have a wide range of both GCSEs and vocational options. Um, what's important to point out here is you'll see that geography and history are also part of this. And that's because just if, you're if your child has already chosen history as their first option, but they also want to study geography, that's possible. So they, there is the option of studying both for those students who want to. So we've chosen a pathway for your child and the pathway booklet that's come home is specific to them. Uh, these pathways are chosen so that we are ensuring we're providing an academic pathway for all and that we also make sure that every student studying a broad curriculum that's going to open up opportunities in the future. We hope these pathways will guide your children towards making really good choices in which they'll be successful. So pathway one is for those students with an aptitude to study of a modern foreign language. Um, obviously this is Spanish or French and depends on what they're currently studying. They will then have two further option choices, which could be either vocational or GCSE. Our pathway two leaves you with three open option choices and again these can be vocational or GCSE and pathway three uh, a vocational subject is one option and then you have two further option choices and again these can be vocational or GCSE. So next steps and I talked to your children about this in assembly today um, read the pathway booklet that's been given out. And within that pathway booklet, there are also information sheets for every single subject so that you can find out any more information about those subjects that um, they might be interested in. Also on the website, every subject has a video with, um, that explains a bit more. And between the information sheets and the subject videos, you should get your answers to how are these assessed? Why should you pick this subject? Uh, what topics are covered within this subject at GCSE level? What are the career opportunities? Where does this potentially lead you? Um, and in that also uh, links to the curriculum specifications. So lots of information there to support and help you in finding out as much as possible about these separate qualifications. I've also asked your children to talk to their teachers. So if they have any questions about a subject, their teachers would be delighted, I'm sure, to talk to them about their subject. And then finally, the, the options form is within the booklet. It just needs to be completed and returned to their tutors by that 31st of March. Something else I talked to them about this morning was the need for them to choose subjects that they like, 
choose subjects that they're interested in, that they're good at. And for those students who are lucky enough to have an idea of what they might like to do in the future, what subjects are going to support them with their aspirations going forwards? I think it's really key um, to, to also consider just because they particularly like a teacher, obviously at GCSE they, may, they might not have that same teacher. So it's important not to, to be steered too much by their teachers or by their friends. This is about them and their future careers and what subjects are they going to enjoy and be successful at. So trying to steer them away from just choosing what their friends are choosing or because they like a teacher, but actually thinking about what's right for them as a person. So our options form, uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the actual filling in of that form. At the end of each options form is this, which is really important because we really need to see a signature from the student and the parent or carer. And we're really hoping that this is going to be a dialogue between you and that uh, you will be able to support your children. And we want to make sure that you are happy with the choices that they're making. And um, so that's on those forms. Now, our aim is to give every child their first choice. Mrs Creed talked about the fact that she's structured it in such a way. She's created a lot, an awful lot more work for herself, but she thinks that's worthwhile because we really want children to have a, a real chance of picking any subject that they want within their spec without having to put it into blocks. Um, but because of that, there may be an exceptional circumstance where it's not possible for a child to have their first choice, in which case we are going to need some backups. So it differs slightly depending on what pathway you're on. So obviously on these pathway forms, there are the humanities option choices, etc. But when it comes to the open options, it's going to look something like this with the full list. Um, and if you're on pathway one or pathway three, we're asking you to pick uh, first choice, so that number one, your main choice, what do I want to study? So I want to do dance, so I'm going to put a one beside dance. But if for any chance there's this exceptional circumstance that means that we can't run dance or there's a problem with that, then we would ask you to say, OK, if I can't do dance, I would do design and technology and put a two beside that. And that's how we have a backup ready. Um, but as I said, Mrs Creed is working incredibly hard to, to, to get um, every child their first choice, that is very definitely our preferred aim. If you're on pathway two, it's slightly different because you have three open options. I do not want to ask you to give me a backup for every single one. What I would really like to be able to do is to ask you to choose your three choices and then give me two backups. So if you choose uh, geography, for instance, and you put a tick, for your option two geography, then you can't tick geography for option three, option four, backup one or backup two. OK, so hopefully that will limit how many you need to have for backups, because I know that's particularly difficult. And can I just reassure you that we really do aim to give every child their first choice. We're just making sure that we have everything um, as tightly organised as possible to make this system work for us all. So um, finally from me, we've set up a year nine options email address. Any questions, please use this email address. It comes directly to me and I can make sure that any questions that come in are answered and answered um, properly and timely. Um, if there is a need for a question to be answered by a subject specialist, it may be possible to arrange an appointment on that Wednesday the 24th that we have organised for that please just email me on this email address and I will do my best to sort that and organise that for you. So I am now just looking at some of the questions that have come in. So apologies whilst I do a bit of multitasking and do that. Um, so one question that I've had is, are we more likely to get first choice if we return the form early? No, no, you don't. Um, we are um, not going to look at these until the 31st of March. Uh, it's not a speed thing, first come, first serve. That's not how it works. 
and I would just like to reiterate that we really are aiming to give every child their first choice. So I think it's really important that these forms are done um, considered thoroughly and if we can um, take your time to do that, uh, that deadline the 31st of March hopefully gives you that time to, to discuss it. Please don't feel that there's a rush to get it in earlier than that. Um, another question I have, can you confirm PE is an option choice? Uh, yes, uh, OCR Sports Science is our PE option um, and all students will study core PE um, as part of their core curriculum. Um, another question that I've got here, um, is there a business studies option? Yes, yes there is. Uh, we're offering enterprise and marketing, uh, which is the option for this. Overall, these questions that we've got, we're, we're making sure that we're offering a range of really high quality subjects. So this does mean that we are not offering everything. We really are making sure that um, where there is a course being offered, that we can uh, ensure that that's delivered high quality to the standard that we would want to so that your child can be successful in that subject. I'm just having a look to see if I have anything else come through. So, I've got one here, if my daughter isn't on pathway one, will she still be considered for a foreign language? Absolutely, you'll notice um, that uh, Spanish and GCSE Spanish and French is an option on our um, list for all students um, and but I have just asked that if that's something that you would like to do and you're not on pathway one to email me on the year nine options um, email address so that we can discuss it and make sure that your child is going to be successful in that but yes it's very definitely there as an option if you're not on pathway one Um, so I'm just having a look. OCR and um, level two, yes, these are GCSE equivalents. They're just the vocational equivalents. So that's a really good question. All of these, um, all these options are GCSE equivalent. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think there are some questions here that I would rather answer personally. So if you have asked a question, there's an awful lot of them and I apologise, it's quite hard to manage that as well as, as um, answer them all thoroughly. So if I haven't answered your question, please do make sure that you email me. I'm looking forward to getting the emails from you and I'm looking forward to seeing your students around school in the next two weeks, hopefully having really good discussions with their teachers and their tutors about what subjects they're wanting to study. So. Thank you very much for your time this evening. It's been a pleasure to um, be able to talk you through this and I hope you all have a very good evening. Thank you very much. Bye bye.